Candide had brought such a valet with him from Cadiz, as one often meets with on the coasts of Spain and in the American colonies. He was a quarter Spaniard, born of a mongrel in Tucumán. He had been singing boy, sacristan, sailor, monk, peddler, soldier, and lackey. His name was Cacambo, and he loved his master, because his master was a very good man. He quickly saddled the two Andalusian horses. Come, master, let us follow the old woman's advice, let us start, and run without looking behind us. Candide shed tears. Oh! My dear Cungand! Must I lead you just at a time when the governor was going to sanction our nuptials? Cungand, brought to such a distance what will become of you? She will do as well as she can, said Cacambo. The women are never at a loss. God provides for them. Let us run. Whither art thou carrying me? Where shall we go? What shall we do without Cungand, said Candide? By St. James of Compostela, said Cacambo, you were going to fight against the Jesuits. Let us go to fight for them. I know the road well. I'll conduct you to their kingdom where they will be charmed to have a captain that understands the Bulgarian exercise. You'll make a prodigious fortune, if we cannot find our account in one world we shall in another. It is a great pleasure to see and do new things. You have before been in Paraguay, then, said Candide. I, sure, answered Cacambo, I was servant in the College of the Assumption, and am acquainted with the government of the Good Fathers as well as I am with the streets of Cadiz. It is an admirable government. The kingdom is upwards of three hundred leagues in diameter, and divided into thirty provinces, there the fathers possess all, and the people nothing, it is a masterpiece of reason and justice. For my part one see nothing so divine as the fathers who here make war upon the kings of Spain and Portugal, and in Europe confess those kings, who here kill Spaniards, and in Madrid send them to heaven, this delights me, let us push forward. You are going to be the happiest of mortals. What pleasure will it be to those fathers to hear that a captain who knows the Bulgarian exercise has come to them? As soon as they reached the first barrier, Cacambo told the advanced guard that a captain wanted to speak with my lord the commandant. Notice was given to the main guard, and immediately a Paraguayan officer ran and laid himself at the feet of the commandant to impart this news to him. Candide and Cacambo were disarmed, and their two Andalusian horses seized. The strangers were introduced between two files of musketeers, the commandant was at the further end, with the three-cornered cap on his head, his gown tucked up, a sword by his side, and a spontoon, fifteen, in his hand. He beckoned, and straightway the newcomers were encompassed by four and twenty soldiers. A sergeant told them they must wait, that the commandant could not speak to them, and that the reverend father provincial does not suffer any Spaniard to open his mouth but in his presence, or to stay above three hours in the province. And where is the reverend father provincial? said Cacambo. He is upon the parade just after celebrating mass, answered the sergeant, and you cannot kiss his spurs till three hours hence. However, said Cacambo, the captain is not a Spaniard, but a German, he is ready to perish with hunger as well as myself, cannot we have something for breakfast, while we wait for his reverence? The sergeant went immediately to acquaint the commandant with what he had heard. God be praised, said the reverend commandant, since he is a German, I may speak to him, take him to my arbor. Candide was at once conducted to a beautiful summer house, ornamented with a very pretty colonnade of green and gold marble, and with trellises, enclosing parakeets, hummingbirds, flybirds, guinea hens, and all other rare birds. An excellent breakfast was provided in vessels of gold and while the Paraguayans were eating maize out of wooden dishes, in the open fields and exposed to the heat of the sun, the reverend father commandant retired to his arbor. He was a very handsome young man, with a full face, white skin but high in color, he had an arched eyebrow, a lively eye, red ears, vermilion lips, a bold air, but such a boldness as neither belonged to a Spaniard nor a Jesuit. They returned their arms to Candide and Cacambo, and also the two Andalusian horses, 
to whom Kakambo gave some oats to eat just by the arbor, having an eye upon them all the while for fear of a surprise. Candide first kissed the hem of the commandant's robe, then they sat down to table. You are, then, a German, said the Jesuit to him in that language. Yes, Reverend Father, answered Candide. As they pronounced these words they looked at each other with great amazement, and with such an emotion as they could not conceal. And from what part of Germany do you come, said the Jesuit. I am from the dirty province of Westphalia, answered Candide, I was born in the castle of Thundertentronk. Oh! Heavens! Is it possible? cried the commandant. What a miracle! cried Candide. Is it really you? said the commandant. It is not possible, said Candide. They drew back, they embraced, they shed rivulets of tears. What, is it you, reverend father? You, the brother of the fair Cumgond. You, that was slain by the Bulgarians. You, the baron's son. You, a Jesuit in Paraguay. I must confess this is a strange world that we live in. Oh, Pangloss! Pangloss! How glad you would be if you had not been hanged! The commandant sent away the Negro slaves and the Paraguayans, who served them with liquors and goblets of rock crystal. He thanked God and St. Ignatius a thousand times, he clasped Candide in his arms, and their faces were all bathed with tears. You will be more surprised, more affected, and transported, said Candide, when I tell you that Cungand, your sister, whom you believe to have been ripped open, is in perfect health. Where? In your neighborhood, with the governor of Buenos Aires, and I was going to fight against you. Every word which they uttered in this long conversation but added wonder to wonder. Their souls fluttered on their tongues, listened in their ears, and sparkled in their eyes. As they were Germans, they sat a good while at table, waiting for the Reverend Father Provincial, and the Commandant spoke to his dear Candide as follows. <laughs>